So, good morning and welcome to the third video in this lockdown flip through and today we are looking at my edition of The Unknown Paintings of Kai Nielsen. Um, this is actually a really nice book. It's kind of special. I am a huge Kai Nielsen fan as are many other people. Um, and this book was published in 1977 and it was really the first um, peak of a series of lost paintings that Kai Nielsen had done at the end of his career. And as shocking as it may seem to us today, nobody wanted them. Um, these were these illustrations for 1001 Nights and they sat for years and years in a wooden box until they were finally brought out in print. And of course now um, Tauschen has put out a, a limited edition series, a very expensive one, um, showcasing this work with gold foil and everything. Um, but I have the 1977 edition, and it's really nice, and we'll flip through it now. So Kai Nielsen, um, he came from Copenhagen. He was, yeah, so Danish. He really had a close relationship with uh, Denmark his whole life. And again, as shocking as it may seem today, at the end of his career, um, he really couldn't find work. Nobody wanted to work with him anymore. His work was, his style of illustration, very influenced by Arthur Beardsley, by Japanese paintings. Um, it had really fallen out of style, and um, nobody would take this series of paintings except some friends of his, some uh, family friend. And um, this whole eulogy here is written by um, a woman who was very close to him and his family, and whose family kept the paintings. So that's really cool. Um, I mean, it's really crazy, again, to think that there was a time when people did not love Kai Nielsen's work. Um, but in the 1960s, 1970s, um, he, there was sort of a revival. But I mean, post-war, um, he died in 1957. People weren't interested in Golden Age illustration anymore. That was not the style and that was not what people wanted. Um, of course, now, like I said, he's one of the most popular children's book illustrators from that era. And his work is very appreciated and very influential. Um, so you can really see in this book um, the sort of the tail end of his style really becoming more and more flat, more and more stylized. Um, I think in this particular case, it does have a lot in common with um, the Persian miniature paintings, which is totally appropriate for doing work on 1001 Nights. Um, the nice thing about this book is it provides the full painting. And usually after that, there's some kind of close-up, which is really nice. Um, I really like a lot of these editions from 1977. The print quality is very nice. The paper isn't a, a bright white like we often get today. It's a little softer. Um, but still very good print quality and often very nicely put together. Um, I really enjoy being, I really like it when I can find these, um, these editions from the 1970s. For my collection. They're usually not too expensive. You can pay between sort of 20 to 70 euros um, depending on the book and how rare it is and the condition. This one is in very good condition. So what I noticed about Kai Nielsen is even early in his career he uses a lot of black. Um, a lot of illustrators didn't do that. Um, they would do more hatching or they would do more color, more gouache, but Kai Nielsen always used black. Um, very often very strong framing and um, really had a very distinctive look. I mean, he his work is instantly recognizable. He did work in the States for a short period of time. Uh, for instance, he did the Bald Mountain sequence in Fantasia. So he did work for Disney. Um, there's parts of Fantasia, especially the sequence with the um, the Pegasi flying in. That is very, very Kai Nielsen. It's a very distinctive landscape. He did concept art for the second Fantasia movie for the Ride of the Valkyries. It's amazing art. And Kai Nielsen fans, of course, are very disappointed that we never got to see that. It's a little bit like lost media. He did work for churches. He did various commissions. Um, but unfortunately, at this point, his work was just not being appreciated. His style was really out of favor. Um, it wasn't seen as modern, it, you know, and it's unfortunate that when he returned to Denmark, really, he did not get commissions. He he sort of died a little bit unloved. 
But of course, he's had the last laugh and his work is more popular than ever and can be found in a lot of different compilations, lots of art books. People really like his work. I really like his horses. I think they're really beautiful. This here you can see like full on abstraction. Um, you can really see that here as well. He, he really has adopted a very geometric, much more flat style. Um, but yeah, I like his horses a lot. I think they're really pretty. I think he's sort of one of my favorite illustrators for golden age, golden age horse drawings. Um, really lovely use of blues in this series as well. Very nice ultramarines. Um, yeah, I mean, he's a really skilled painter. Um, really detailed work, really lovely. And of course, it's great that more and more people are coming to appreciate his art. Sometimes I see people comment that at first they thought he's a woman because of his name, but no, it's just a, it's a Danish name. So you can, of course, find lots of autobiographies about him. So this is an example of some of the more modern editions you can find. This is a French edition of East of the Sun and West of the Moon. It's not very big. Um, it came with stickers, which was really great. It was a, an unexpected surprise, and they're now in my journal. I was thrilled to get Kai Nielsen stickers. Um, this is also a really nice reproduction. This book contains a lot of also close-ups of his work, which is also really, which is really nice. Um, really, really good reproductions. Really nice. A really nice modern edition. Um, you can just appreciate his work when you see it close up, how much detail is in there. So I won't flip through the whole thing. It also has a little bibliography, a little sort of biography at the front. He did a lot. He did a really, really diverse range. And I mean, he's one of those artists who also worked a lot in black and white because during the golden age of illustration, you would often have black and white or a single color prints in the book. Um, we saw a little bit of that in my book with on my album from Sulamit Wolfing. And then you would have more full color illustrations. Um, I have seen original editions containing his work at the Frankfurt Book Messe, at the big Frankfurt Book Fair, but I could not afford them. Um, but fortunately, we can get good reproductions and nice printings today. This again is just, I really like his horses. There's a lot of curve. He's got that really collected neck. Um, I really find his color palettes to be he uses a lot of pink, like a lot of um, of the illustrators um, didn't use pink. But again, here you can see that flat black background he likes to use. But yeah, um, he really does a lot of stuff with floral motifs. Very pretty. He's got a lot of really nice um, costume design in his work. So for instance, for the powder and the crinoline. Here again, you can see a lot of green and pink. Um, very nice warm tones and this really strong black shape in the foreground. That's really typical of his style. Um, you can really see the influence of the Japanese gardens. Um, but when I came to Europe, I've seen trees like that here too. So it's definitely in the landscape. Um, again, here's that flat black and that geometric patterning in the front with that pink and green. Yeah, he has a very distinct color style. He has a really lovely color scheme, lots of detail. Um, really good use of negative space. You can see that here. Um, lots of detail in the foreground, a strong black shape, and then just open sky behind. So yeah, this is a nice little book to have. I would definitely recommend it. It wasn't expensive. And I would definitely say he's been an influence on my work. I really, I really enjoy Kai Nielsen and so do a lot of other people. So that's two little book flip throughs, one more recent and then one, of course, vintage and more of a collector's item. And if you were to see this one, I would definitely say get it. Um, this was, I think, one of the first, the first or the first book to publish these 1001 Nights illustrations. So that's kind of a nice little thing to have on your shelf. So we'll see what we look at tomorrow. Um, I haven't decided yet. Maybe John Bauer or another um, children's book illustrator. That might just be the theme for the week. And I hope you enjoyed this video and got to see something interesting.